Hi guys, Mrs. A here. We are now going to solve for angle theta when we are given a point that is on the Cartesian plane. So we're going to make use of the x and y coordinates here to be able to come up with our trig ratios for angle theta and then to also solve for angle theta itself. The first thing that we always do when we're given this kind of a problem is to sketch a diagram so we can see where angle theta actually is on the Cartesian plane. So that's the first thing that we always do. Do our grid and we're given the point 5, negative 8. So we're going to sketch that in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry, the point was negative 5, negative 8. Yes, negative 5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there lies negative 5 and negative 8. Our terminal arm lies on that point there. So this means that we can create a right angle triangle like this. And we can label this um, using the 5 as one leg of the right angle triangle and the 8 as the other leg of the right angle triangle and we're left with that hypotenuse that we can solve for by doing the Pythagorean theorem. So c squared equals 8 squared plus 5 squared. c squared equals 64 plus 25 and so c is equal to the square root of 89 and we can just leave it at that as that so that we can get some exact values here. Now we have this right angle triangle with all three sides labeled. This angle in here we can call alpha because theta, remember, is always the angle that is made counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So here we have angle theta that we will solve for at the end. For now, angle theta and angle, angle alpha in this right angle triangle have the same um, trigonometric ratios. So we're going to go ahead and do those next. So we use that triangle to help us come up with these. The first trig ratio, sine theta, is equal to opposite, let's write that in, over hypotenuse. And so according to this, the opposite side is 8 and the hypotenuse is square root of 89. If you want to rationalize that de denominator, you'll get 8 root 89 over 89. Then we do the cosine ratio. So cosine theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 5. The hypotenuse is root 89. Again, if you want to rationalize this, we're going to do 5 root 89 over 89. And finally, the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And the opposite side is 8, and the adjacent side is 5. So we get 8 over 5 here. Now for all of these, we did not take into account our um, cast rule, and we do have to do that. So let's go back. Remember the cast rule tells us which ratios are positive and negative. So for sine, in this third quadrant, only, uh, sorry, sine is negative. The only one that's positive is the tangent ratio. So sine is negative and cosine is negative. So let's go back because that's really important to get our signs um, properly put in there. And tangent is positive, so we can leave it as is. So this gives us all three of the trig ratios for this angle um, theta that has a terminal arm on that negative 5, negative 8 point. Lastly, we want to find out what theta actually is. So we can first calculate what alpha is here as the related acute angle, and then we can use that to calculate what theta is. To find alpha, we can use any of these trig ratios that we just came up with. Um, let's use the tangent. So 
the related acute angle there we're calling alpha. Tangent of alpha was 8 over 5. So to find the value of alpha, we do the inverse tangent of 8 over 5. If you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get um, alpha of 58 degrees. We want the value of theta, which is that principal angle that comes around like this. So to find that theta, we're going to do 180 degrees plus 58 degrees. And so we get 230, oh, sorry about that, 238 degrees as the value for angle theta that comes around here, which makes that terminal arm on our Cartesian plane. Thanks for watching. Thanks for visiting Mrs. A Loves Math.